AI upscalers like Magnifique have been making rounds across social media, and rightfully so, the results from these upscalers are pretty miraculous. You can see these before and after images, and some of the details that they enhance these images with are pretty mind-blowing. But these aren't actually upscalers. Traditional upscaling works by taking the pixel level data, the actual colors, and multiplying those so you can create a larger image. But these upscalers are completely different. What they're doing is actually running a model based on stable diffusion, and they're generating details that don't exist in the original image. One of the best examples I have is of this Laura Croft. You can see that it takes this polygon version of Laura Croft and turns it into this beautiful, full resolution, high fidelity photo of her, but that's not possible. None of that photo, none of that pixel data exists in that original image. And that's where stable diffusion and AI generative art comes in. And I'm gonna show you three different free tools to achieve similar results. First, I wanna show you some examples on the Magnifique website. Take a picture of this house out by the ocean as an example. And you can see as you slide the image to the left, it's completely changing the flowers that are in the flower pot. None of that data exists in the original image. It's also adding blossoms to the flowers on the roof and adding other details that just simply don't exist in the original image. Now don't get me wrong, this result is stunning, but it isn't upscaling. It's more reimagining. And this is another great example. Watch closely as I move the slider across the bread you're gonna see changes in the texture and even in the contours of the bread itself. Look at this end piece. There's no break in it, it's just crust, but when you scroll over it, you can see that it's almost as if it's been sliced. So you're getting a lot more detail and this looks fantastic, but it isn't that original image. And I actually don't think that's a problem. There are a ton of use cases for taking a low resolution image and bumping it up. If you're using it for something like B-roll or for a presentation and you just don't have a high enough resolution image. So I see a ton of use cases for this technology. And this is literally the only reason I don't use Magnifique. There's no free version. It starts at $39 a month and that's just simply too high for my usage. And I know their GPU costs for running this are through the roof, so I don't blame them for this. But this isn't a debate about their business model. I want to show you how this is actually being done on the back end. And that brings us to our first free competitor, and that's Kriya. Now, Kriya is an open beta, so at some point they're going to have to have a business model for this. They're going to have to start charging, but for now, you can do this completely free. And they have two different things that are really cool real-time image generation, so as you type, it actually generates an image, or upscale and enhance, and today we're gonna focus in on that upscale and enhance. The user interface for Kriya is really simple. You've got this area to upload an image, place where you can put in a prompt to describe your image, how much you wanna upscale, the style, some sliders to control the AI strength and the resemblance strength, and then finally a negative prompt. And I happen to have the perfect image to start with. It's a really, really low resolution thumbnail from my 3D printing YouTube channel. As you can see, the image quality on this thing is awful. It's lost almost all the detail. You can't really tell, but I'm holding a hydroponic cup from one of my 3D printers, and those things coming through my hands are actually the roots of the plant. For our prompt, I'm gonna help it out a little bit here. I'm gonna say a young adult man in a backyard standing on the patio holding the fine stringy roots of a tomato plant from a hydroponic garden pot. Upscaling factor, we're gonna do 2X upscale. For the style, we're gonna go photorealistic, and then we're gonna go ahead and just crank up the AI strength and the resemblance strength all the way. I'm not gonna put anything in the negative prompts. I'm gonna click enhance. And here's the result. Look at the details as we start to slide over this. Now, obviously, it loses the fact that this is a photo of me, but this is where I'm talking about these aren't upscalers, they're reimagining things. Here's where it gets a little wonky. You can see that it replaced some of the roots with another hand. This is where stable diffusion sometimes gets a little bit weird. But I gotta say, back in the back there, that's actually what my hydroponic tower looks like. This is a pretty good result overall and something that created a somewhat usable image out of something that you couldn't use before. And I think by adding a negative prompt and refining our prompt a little bit more, we could get an even better result. And Kriya provides their own examples as well, like this chocolate cake that is completely reimagined, but as you can see, pretty much follows what you'd expect. Now there are some changes just like with Magnifique, you can see over in here, 
it changes what looks like maybe nuts or something over to some type of fruit. Similarly, here's a really low resolution photo of a frog and it changes it completely. Keeps most of it, although you can see it loses some of those blue colors from the original image. It's still a really cool result. But what if you want to run these on your home computer? That's where some software called Comfy UI comes in. Comfy UI is a modular node-based stable diffusion system. What that means is you can string together multiple different types of commands to automate an entire workflow. Let's say your typical workflow is to generate an image, upscale it, and then save it. This can do all of that in one pass without you having to run multiple different commands. And if you go to websites like openart.ai, you can get other people's workflows. You can even share your own. And these can be really powerful, everything from creating stable diffusion animations, or if you watched my video on DXL Turbo, we also used a workflow generated in Comfy UI. If you're one of my Patreon subscribers, I've got a one-click installer for Comfy UI. Otherwise, let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do an entire walkthrough on how to install Comfy UI and get it running. For the next two examples, we're going to look at some workflows created by Olivio Sarikis. He's a great YouTuber, and I genuinely hope that you watch his channel and subscribe to it if you haven't. He's created this photo portrait upscaler, which you can run in collab directly on the OpenAI Art website, or you can download it and run it locally on your own install of Comfy UI. There's also Portrait Reimagined Upscaler, which is more of that Magnifique style where you can take a really low resolution image and make it something completely new. Let's take a look at both of those. Now for this first example of the photo upscaler, we're gonna use collab, so we don't have to install or run anything locally on our machine. I'm gonna use the same file that we used in that last example for Kriya, and I'm gonna give it the same prompt. Now you can see this is a pretty complex setup. It goes through all these different nodes. It's upscaling 4X normal here. It's running a bunch of different refiner models. It's doing a lot of different image masking types using control nets, and then it's finally running it through stable diffusion with the Realistic Vision 5.1 Safe Tensor model. And here's the end result. You can see it started with that same low resolution image and it ended with arguably a better result than Kriya in the fact that at least the hands are normalized and you don't have any extra body parts. Now it is a little bit blurrier and a little bit lower resolution, but actually I wonder what would happen if we ran the resulting image through the upscaler once again. Let's try that. Go ahead and take this image and save it. We'll go back to the original node, choose a file to upload, We'll select that new uploaded version and you'll click on Q prompt. That's going to kick off the entire process once again. And you see down here at the bottom, here's the original image. It created two different control nets. The one on the left is a depth map and the one on the right just sort of gets the outlines and the edges of all the detail in the image. And here's our final image. We're getting a lot more clarity on some of the details in the plants and the leaves. You can see the tree in the background has a lot more detail in the new result than it did in the old one. The face, the hairline, the clothing, everything else looks less blurry. There's still some really weird stuff going on with the plants around the hydroponic tower. And it looks like the eyes are starting to get a little wonky. But we could always take this, run it through a control net face swap in something like Focus. We could probably fix all that stuff too. Pretty cool. For the second one, the Portrait Reimagined Upscaler, there's no option to run this in Colab directly on the site. So we're going to download the JSON file. We're gonna jump over to my own Comfy UI install running on my local host machine. We're just gonna load the configuration file, go into the manager and install missing custom nodes. Once that's done, we'll upload a file. In this case, we'll use the one generated from the last image set and we'll use the exact same prompt that we used on our last one. Click on Q prompt and that's gonna kick everything off and get it running. All right, here's the result that it came back with. Now at this point, it's realistically just an entirely new image. You can see that the roots have been replaced with actual tomatoes. I'm holding a tomato that's been cut in half and then there are tomato pots everywhere. It's replaced the back fence with a garden. It's replaced the concrete wall with what appears to be some sort of sink and wood columns. But it's still pretty cool. This is almost like a control net that really just uses the original image shape and depth map as guidance and then completely reimagines it. So reimagining upscaler is kind of a perfect name for this thing. And these are really just two of hundreds of different workflows that you can run through Comfy UI. 
Hopefully you learned something today. All the links to everything you tested today are gonna to be down in the description below. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want me to do a deep dive on any of these subjects, even a comfy UI install guide. Otherwise, I'm Brian Lovett. This is all your tech AI. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Breaking down AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. All your tech AI, earning the renown.